Well, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning at 11.30, and here's our latest decision support briefing on Hurricane Irma. I want to thank everybody for joining us, and a reminder that we'll be sharing this uh, briefing both in a PDF and in a uh, YouTube video uh, later this morning. Uh, look for that on our website, and uh, you should get an email response, I believe, uh, with links to those uh, materials. Well, first, uh, let's talk about what has changed. Um, the hurricane continues on track. Uh, we are increasingly confident that the system will impact North Carolina. Uh, it looks like it's going to be very difficult for us to escape um, uh, the storm. Uh, the exact track, however, will determine what type of impact and the magnitude of it uh, as it moves uh, across the southeast. More details on that here in a few moments. Also, um, we want to encourage folks to uh, finish their planning, especially uh, the public finish their planning stages now and, and on Friday, and they'll need to execute uh, those hurricane safety plans over the weekend. Fortunately, we have good weather on Saturday and uh, for the most part Sunday, so uh, making preparations should not be a problem. Uh, but uh, you need to start gathering your materials and getting ready and uh, making those things happen as we head into Saturday and Sunday. So a summary, uh, in bold at the top, we are uh, now increasingly confident that the system will produce significant impacts across the state uh, on Monday and Tuesday. Our confidence in that is now moderate to high across central North Carolina. However, uh, we're still struggling a little bit on the exact uh, type of impact and the magnitude because of track uncertainties. Uh, first, first and foremost, we expect strong wind gusts uh, could result in damage and especially power outages. Uh, and those power outages could last for days across central North Carolina. Uh, think of the inland impacts of Hurricanes Hugo or Fran as a bit of a benchmark. Uh, not saying that this is an exactly similar type event, but that's something to maybe put in the back of your minds. Don't focus on the track of Hugo or Fran, but more so on the fact that a inland wind swath uh, pushed well inland and affected uh, locations well removed from the coast with lots of trees down which resulted in power outages and other uh, hazards uh, that lasted for many, many days. In addition, we expect uh, heavy rainfall to occur with the storm as it moves inland. Uh, that heavy rainfall uh, will likely uh, be focused more across western and central North Carolina, uh, but again the exact track uh, will determine the amounts and the exact focus on that, so we're trying to refrain from being too specific. And with any, any inland penetrating tropical cyclone, uh, there is a threat for tornadoes. Uh, those will exist mainly along the track and especially to the right uh, of the uh, storm center. And uh, again, the confidence regarding the track and then the expected impacts will continue to increase over the next few days. Uh, and would not be surprised to start seeing hurricane watches, which are now up across portions of Florida, be extended northward uh, during the coming day or two. Uh, just an update uh, on the system itself, the latest advisory at 11 o'clock still had maximum sustained winds at 175 miles per hour, which is still a uh, uh, Category 5 hurricane. Uh, the system uh, will likely ebb and flow in terms of exact intensity over the next day or two, but still remember, remain a, a devastatingly strong system. Uh, the uh, track still is becoming clear as it uh, approaches Florida with that northward turn, which has long been discussed, still expected, and that would uh, likely cause the system to just graze the southeast Florida coast with an eventual uh, inland penetration across the southeast, uh, most likely up across Georgia and South Carolina. The new forecast from the Hurricane Center now includes a forecast point on Tuesday morning, uh, very close to Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina, with the system uh, likely uh, down to a strong tropical storm at that point. However, when the system moves across the beaches, uh, wherever it makes landfall across the southeast, it is quite likely to be a very potent Category 3 or 4 hurricane. Uh, so that means that strong winds will penetrate inland. Also keep in mind this forecast point here on Tuesday, uh, which is I believe the Day 5 uh, forecast point, 
typical forecast errors at that point are on the order of 200 miles. So that's why we see this cone of uncertainty in here. Uh, so the storm center could, uh, in many uh, aspects, uh, likely fall within that cone. Even outside the cone is not out of the realm of possibilities. Uh, so there is some spread there. And depending on exactly where it lies in that track will determine uh, the degree of impact across the state. Rainfall amounts are uh, expected to uh, be significant and result in uh, flash flooding in uh, especially flood prone areas. But the rainfall amounts here are getting to the point where we do anticipate some river flooding. Initially the threat will be with flash flooding and um, uh, those are typically on streams and creeks and urban areas and then transition into river flooding for uh, subsequent days. We expect the significant rain to begin to move from south to north across uh, central North Carolina beginning very late on Sunday night and more likely uh, just around daybreak on Monday uh, and then spread northward during the course of the morning. So the weather on Monday will be deteriorating, uh, especially during the afternoon. So most preparations and, and, and work need to be completed uh, quite likely by Sunday night as the weather will be going downhill very quickly on Monday. Uh, rainfall amounts, at least at this point, uh, are likely to range on the order of 6 to 10 inches near the storm center. This forecast uh, only um, uh, uh, has amounts uh, up to maybe 6 inches or so um, across south southern half of the central North Carolina area. These amounts will likely increase a bit as confidence in the track uh, becomes more certain. Uh, the rainfall again should uh, continue from Monday morning through uh, early Tuesday, but it would not be surprised to see a quick end to the rainfall on the back side of the storm uh, with uh, the rain uh, uh, probably wrapped up by Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday night. Again, with the heavy rainfall here, we do expect some river flooding, but we do not expect Matthew-like flooding uh, with just, you know, a devastating type flooding across eastern North Carolina. Uh, the track will determine that to some degree, but uh, we're reasonably confident given the quick forward motion of the storm system that that is not likely to happen. Uh, perhaps of more significance might be the inland hurricane and tropical storm force winds. This is a new uh, product from the Hurricane Center which uh, provides the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds. And uh, if we uh, look at the guidance here, tropical storm force winds, which are roughly winds sustained on 39 miles per hour or greater, likely to move across the, uh, the coast of South Carolina Monday morning around 8 o'clock into our area uh, maybe midday on Monday. And uh, uh, the confidence in the, uh, the intensity of the winds uh, is still somewhat lacking given the, the uncertainty on the track, but certainly uh, tropical storm force winds are a good possibility across much of central North Carolina and depending on where the system makes landfall, hurricane force winds um, are not out of the question. Those details will likely be uh, clear by uh, tomorrow and especially on Saturday. And again, remember that uh, regardless of the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale, a landfalling hurricane is still dangerous regardless if it's a category four or three or even a two. Uh, the system is not likely to make landfall across the Carolinas as a Category 5. It is likely to weaken, and while the system may be weakening as it approaches our region, that is not a reason for us to lower our guard or feel uh, safe in any way. So regardless of that, um, uh, in terms of the actual intensity of the winds as it moves inland, uh, the storm will remain a um, significant threat and have significant impacts across the area. Sadly, uh, we have other tropical systems out in the Atlantic right now. Uh, Irma, uh, we have addressed already. Uh, there's Hurricane Jose, which is east of the Windward Islands. Uh, that system is moving off to the west-northwest. Unfortunately, it is likely to move across portions to the far northeastern Caribbean islands, uh, some of those areas that have already been pounded by Irma. So uh, recovery efforts there will be significantly impacted. Uh, that system, though, uh, appears at this point like it should recurve before uh, approaching the southeast coast, which is great news. And um, Hurricane Katia in the uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico is likely to move west or into Mexico and not impact uh, the continental United States directly, at least not for a few days. Our next uh, weather briefing uh, should be uh, this afternoon, uh, either by 5 or 
perhaps six o'clock is probably a better time. Um, uh, we'll have that updated. So uh, uh, after five, we'll have updated information provided to you. Uh, keep in mind um, that uh, this information will be available on our website uh, at this um, URL. In addition, we'll have uh, information on our social media posts and um, and uh, other other um, communication mechanisms such as Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube, as well as our website. And again, uh, if you have questions for us, don't hesitate to give us a call. Our next uh, All Partners Briefing uh, for today is scheduled at 4.30, and we'll uh, be using uh, the same kind of communication number and mechanism, so please uh, feel free to join us then. Again, uh, thanks for joining our briefing, and I'll stick around for just a, a few moments if there are any questions.